Hi, it's Tony from CassetteComeback.com. So, in this video here, bing, it was sort of a, a love letter to the TDKD. But a lot of you pointed out that there's a TDKD missing from that, which I should look at. And what TDKD is that? It's this. It looks like a 1979 TDKD, but it isn't, because this is the true mechanism version. Now, I didn't feature this D for a couple of reasons. One, I didn't have any. They're really hard to find these, especially sealed. And two, there's a lot of talk that these might not be a genuine TDK. So in this video, I'm gonna have a look at this. I'm gonna look around the internet I'm going to examine it a bit deeper and let's see if we can come to some sort of conclusion about this. I mean, basically what's being purported is that in the 1979 lineup, and, and this was also, sorry, available earlier as well in the 1972 lineup, there is a 1972 True Mechanism different thing and the True Mechanism's up there where you can hardly see it. In fact, it sort of goes off as if it's been badly stuck on, but we have the 1979 true mechanism and then of course we have the regular 1979d now what's being bandied around is that the true mechanism was a sort of upgrade if you will to the regular d in light of the sm mechanism which basf and agfa were putting into their cassettes so this was tdk's comeback so let's have a look at this now and look at the facts and look at them and see what this is all about. Is this a real TDK? Because there's a school of thought that this isn't. This is a very well done copy. So let's just start by looking at what we see. Now, the first thing is the wrap is the right color red to me, it seems. However, if we look at the printing of these orange and yellow stripes, the true color is a, sorry, true mechanism is a different color. Why is that? If they were just literally repurposing this to turn it into this, which is what it seems to be, just with the true mechanism bit, how come the color's different on the stripes of the true mechanism? Also, why is a C90 green like it was on pretty much all of the TDKDs? Sorry, all of the TDKs full stop around this time. Why is a C90 green and it's grey here? Why isn't that green? Hmm. So, just on the surface of it there, there is a bit of an inconsistency. So let's have a look at the spines. Again, it could be argued the TDK font on the true mech is smaller because they have to put this trim mechanism icon in. But again, the C90 is in gray and not in green and the colors of the stripes are different. Right, let's have a look at the back. Now, the back of the regular D shows for a start, it's got TDK electronics, it's got the Japanese, the USA, the Germany, and the British, okay? So that's on there, and it says, it's an excellent cassette that enables you and, and to enjoy excellent sound performance with any cassette recorder. Okay, so it's got this, and it's going on about the dimple and bubble sheet together with the precision cassette mechanism, ensures good and stable tape running. Also, the tape checking window is enlarged to let you see all tape running. So that's what it says on the back. Print in Japan, frequency response graph. Okay. The back of the true mechanism loses the frequency response graph. That's not there. Also, it just says TDK Electronics Core Limited because the address is correct, Japan. That's it. Now, some people have noted that these were European market cassettes. If they were European market cassettes, why haven't they got TDK in Europe and in the UK on it, like this one? Why is it just Japan? Well, maybe it's a Japanese-only market cassette. But if it is, why isn't this written in kanji? Because that's what normally happens. There would be some kanji on it. 
So why has it just got the Japanese address on it and not all the other ones? Again, let's see what it says. True Mechanism Dynamic Cassette, TDK's unique, high reliable true mechanism is designed and built to prevent jamming, snarling, fouling, or other operational failures. Every TDK True Mechanism D cassette contains important mechanical components, as can be seen through the transparent shell. Okay, so at this point, let's have a look at this wonder. Now, I'm going to show you this, because when I got these, I was curious and I didn't want to wait for the video, so I unwrapped one earlier, but it was brand new when I unwrapped it. And it's this. And the first thing I've noticed is, it's clear at the back, it's not black. Normally, the backs of these are black. Like, let's open this one because I haven't got a fresh one of these and it's only fair to do this freshly because age deterioration, I take two of the same age that were both new old stock when I got them and we can see. So, if we look at the back of this one, it's black. This one is clear and if we, I don't know if you can see, but it's just ever so slightly bigger, this one. So ever so slightly taller, but it's not black, it's clear. But it does still have the same sort of pattern about it. This one's got Japan down there. This one has Japan, but it's also got a circle for some reason. It's almost like, you know, like a spool circle. But anyway, that's what they look like from the back. So if we open them up and look at the cassettes themselves. The True Mech, for some reason, even though they didn't print it green on the actual... On the actual case itself, it's green on the cassette, just like it is here. So normal bias, EQ, you know, noise reduction. They seem pretty similar sort of labels. If you get closer, you can see the normal bias is a slightly different font on the True Mechanism than it is on the actual D. Also, it's got TDK embossed on the top here, whereas it doesn't on this. Hmm. So, it seems kind of strange to me. It really, really does at this moment in time because, well, there's little things about it that I don't entirely trust. But let's go into the, the J card, shall we? So, when we go into the reg, the proper D, it says about it, enables you to enjoy better sound, performance, any yeah, unique dimple and bubble sheet together with precision cassette mechanism, blah, 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 blah. And this is a UK take because it says uh, the your statutory rights of the consumer affected on the UK. Okay, so saying about the usual stuff, tips on handling and storage. The true mechanism, apart from it's black for some reason at the back, it goes on about the true mechanism. And it's TDK's unique, high reliable true mechanism designed and built to prevent jamming, snarling, fouling, or other operational failures. Every TDK true mechanism D cassette contains important mechanical components, as can be seen through the transparent shell. You know, the guide rollers, the dimple and bubble sheet that talk about that, of high quality, provide a cushion effect for the edges of the tape and maintain their low friction properties indefinitely, do not generate static electricity, and will not deform. But why have they written different copy for the dimple and bubble on here and then the dimple and bubble on here? If there's the same thing, what, what's that all about? You know, precision hubs, two point clamps, all felt pressure pads, five ceiling screws, mirror smooth finish. Mirror smooth finish, but uh, yeah, they really hammer on about this. And if we look at the insides of the J cars now, Again, we can see that the orange, I don't know if my camera can show this, but the orange is a different color between them. It is a different color, the orange, but you know, let's just have a look. After completing the information on this card, tear it off and file it for instant record of your cassette's library content. So yeah, the, you know, the, the two J cards have very, very similar writing on them, but they are a different color. But it's just little things, I mean, can, I don't know if you can see the TDKs on the bottom. The one on the true mechanism seems a bit fatter than the 
regular TDK one and likewise if we just uh, just say other things if we look at this DC 90 there yeah it's like the true mech spills over more in the printing than the the D one did but I guess these are you know it could be different batches it could be different printers did these you know that that could be the reason why there are these little differences in them um, you know the, the again the printing stock yeah they're very very similar very similar and the card feels the same kind of card so you know we, we're seeing the differences now the other thing I want to bring in at this point is this you know if we if we listen to what the actual thing it says itself it's all about it being precision it, it's not snagging you can see everything important you know it's almost like they're selling this true mech as being an upgrade to the regular D you know you've got your regular D but then you've got the true mechanism that's just right that isn't a true mechanism that's a true mechanism if that's so good why didn't they use the true mechanism in a version of the OD or a version of the AD why are there no true mechanism versions of the OD and the AD if this is such a great mechanism that is so good that that isn't good enough even though they still sold that you know this is their biggest selling tape why don't they say hey you know this our biggest selling tape we're telling all your consumers that buy this that actually we could have done it better and this is a better version but we're still going to sell loads of these buy these but there is a better version well, how does that work and why isn't there an OD and AD version and why do the backs of the OD and AD mimic the same style the multiple different distributors in different countries and have the frequency characteristic charts why are they there on these on the original D you know I'll tore it off the original D but not on the OD why are they white and this is black so at this point I don't know I'm not conclusive so whoops let's turn these around again I'm not sure so let's go and have a dig on the internet so I guess the first thing is that I looked around the internet and I wanted to see if this true mechanism cassette came up in any TDK materials so you know they were pretty uh, big on on sponsor with Stevie Wonder and as we can see here Stevie Wonder you know you're gonna put your best cassette forward but that isn't a true mechanism. I mean, to be fair, this is the older generation, but there was a true mechanism version of that as well. And that isn't it. If we say, look at Boots, for example, in the UK, they advertise the SAs, the D3-pack. I've never seen a three-pack of true mechanisms, and they certainly aren't true mechanisms. Where, why aren't they pushing them? And then... You know, we sort of look at more TDK adverts. You know, that's a C60 there, but where's, where's the true mechanism? Why am I not seeing any TDK true mechanisms? I've got another Stevie Wonder one. Again, that's just a regular D. It's not a true mechanism. And uh, here's one. Yes? Oh, no. That's not a true mechanism, D, neither. The, 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 it's not there. And if I look on this website here, this is the, uh, the scan of the, the TDK catalogue. And when you look at the D, everything's there, even the Rare 180. There's no true mechanism. It's never mentioned. So... Here's the insides of the cassettes, okay? Just let me bring it up. This is the true mechanism. This is the 1979. Now, let's look at these. This is where it gets really fuzzy. Because the slip sheets look the same. The same dimply slip sheets, they look the same. The hubs, they look the same. 
the reels don't though if you look can you see the spoked in the uh in the non-true mechanism one but in the true mech they're not spoked they're slippery and the shell isn't just you know the 1979 shell with clear plastic molded and instead it isn't there are lots of differences and i thought what's this and i looked around and found this the TDK HC1 head cleaner. This seems to have the same shell, the same rollers. It's got the little TDK embossed on it there. This looks like the same shell. So where's this TDK? What? What's going on? Did they decide they just wanted to use up a load of head cleaners that they weren't selling and instead repurpose them into making a D for cheaper markets that they didn't want anything actually to do with it. Because if you look at the the shell, it's that frosted shell. It doesn't have the circle bit down here, but it's the same frosted back, but still grid pattern shell that came with this. Even though, again, it's listing all of the different European distributors and, well, distributors around the world. Here it is again. So what is this? It, it, it's just a bizarre, bizarre tape. Because, like I say, slip sheets, I mean, did they repurpose HC1s? I don't know, but the thing that is still missing for me is that it doesn't appear in any adverts or any official TDK brochures that I can find. It's not there. It's always the regular D. So people have said to me in the past that putting a cassette in a deck, biasing it up and comparing the bias and the levels is not a good way to determine if the cassette is the same or not, or if it's good or bad. If you know a better way, let me know, because um, I've looked at the audio tester stuff and I can't see anything which is called a tape comparison tool where it will map a tape out so you can see whether it responds exactly the same as another and which is better and stuff. I, I haven't seen that, but for the purposes of this, I've got the 1979s on top. I've got the brand new one, which I just opened. This is a used one and this is a true mechanism. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bias up the brand new 1979 and let's see what levels of bias it takes and what levels of input it takes. And now the azimuth is correct, as we can see that. The bias in, let's turn that down till it's right. Okay. Sorry, that was a level. The bias is this one. Okay. Right, so the bias is fine, the level is fine, and the azimuth is fine. And that's pretty rock solid. There's not flickering going on there. That's rock solid, okay? So that's the brand new 1979. Now, this is a used 1979. Let's see, now my theory is this should be almost exactly the same. If it's the same tape in there, this should be exactly the same, pretty much. Let's have a look. Right, the azimuth is fine. The level is fine. The bias, well, it's a used tape, but it's pretty much the right levels. Can we agree on that, yeah? Okay, let's take the used one out and put the true mechanism in. Because if this is the same tape, this should not need any tweaks. It should just be the same. So let's start it off. Okay, the azimuth is flickering. It's not quite as stable, but it is kind of there. The level is fine. The bias is over. I know it's only a little bit, but... The 79s, the other versions, the proper TDK ones, 
they were pretty much the same. There wasn't any difference. The only difference came because one was used and one wasn't. It flickered a bit, but this is definitely over bias now compared to them. Let's go back to the levels again. So, what can we draw from that one? Let me just run these again, just to show you. 1979, brand new. Azimuth is fine, levels are fine, bias, a little bit over, I guess. Mmm, see, it's interesting, the bias is a little bit over. Now, because it's getting to the tape, right, there. Use 79. Azimuth is fine, levels are fine. Bias, like I say, it's used, but it's fine. True mechanism. Azimuth is a little bit off. Levels are fine. Bias is over. It is over. So, even though it's not a million miles away, this rough test sort of says that this isn't exactly the same tape formulation as what is in the 1979s. But let's not let that worry us. Let's just for now record some music onto it. So I'm just going to tweak the azimuth a bit because as we can see the azimuth keeps flashing. So it's a little bit out. So let's turn that. Level's fine. Bias, turn it down a bit. Bias is right about there. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, just to make the most of it, is you're going to hear a test tone. This is what I have to do on the ZX9 in order to be able to get the levels right. I play a one kilohertz test tone from an external generator and then use that to make sure that the the actual level's right. Because I said this in the last video, you can't, no, it wasn't the last video, it was the other one. You can't just adjust these so they're perfect and then turn the master down. This doesn't have a master. So I'm just going to record the test tones on this. And all I do is I just do it so that, I don't want to record this at plus three. I know this works, so I have to record, I have to get this to minus one. And then that will record at around zero. So there we go go just about right because this is a 70s ferric i'm also going to put dolby b on it just for because it's only fair i mean it's a 70s ferric what do you want so i'm going to now put a tune from the youtube audio library in this one i'm trying to pick something with a 70s feel to it and this one is called disco funk so let's see if this true mech is actually a decent tape or not, regardless of anything else. So here we go.
So, not type zero, not garbage. Maybe this next little interview that I've held might shed a bit more light on the subject. So, part of this investigation I did was that a gentleman cropped up in our cassette tape group saying that he had dealings with these TDK True mechanism cassettes in the late 70s. And this gentleman, as you can see here, is with me right now. Good evening, sir. How are you? Hi, Tony. All is well here in New York City, where I am. Good. And uh, this is, if you don't know him, this is Gary Ray, who is a member of Blank Cassette Tape. So, Gary, I'm going to leave this to you. Tell me about your dealings with the TDK True mechanism. Well, um, first of all, let me say that, you know, uh, someone had told me about the group at Facebook, and I was very, very interested just because um, I always uh, loved using my cassettes very much so uh, through the 70s and, and part of the 80s. And so um, the first day I joined, I just scrolled on the wall and there was uh, a photo of the TDK True Mechanism tape. And I could not believe it because this was a tape that back uh, about 1979 or 1980, um, I was um, a, a musician playing with a several bands. And also at the same time, uh, my day job was a trucker. So we were moving... Um, furniture, pianos, artwork. And one day, um, the company I worked for, we, we had to go meet uh, some FBI agents on a corner in Williamsburg, Brooklyn. And uh, two of us uh, in the truck, and uh, we get to the corner and, and uh, we met these uh, agents and they said, okay, well, we're gonna be going into this warehouse here and we're gonna be confiscating um, these pallets of cassette tapes, which were counterfeit. And, uh, well, this was uh, unusual for us to be on such a job, but we, sure, let's do it. So uh, we got in after they had, you know, um, opened up the, the doors for us. And this was a, a large warehouse that had pallets of all sorts of different things. And one pallet in the center of the warehouse had probably several several hundred boxes of cassette tapes. And um, so apparently they were counterfeit tapes. And according to the FBI agent, they had come from Cyprus. Now, whether they so were... So just to clarify, this is Cyprus near Greece, not Cyprus as in Cyprus Hill. This is no, CYP Cyprus, 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 okay. Yes, in Greece. Okay. Uh, so, so now... Um, where they were manufactured, I don't know. Uh, they that that could have been, they could have come from somewhere else. Uh, but this shipment had come to New York from Cyprus, and so we we were hired to load these boxes onto our truck, and then take them to another warehouse in Harlem, in Manhattan, where they would eventually be destroyed. So. Um, I, you know, I was playing music at the time, and cassette tapes are just so valuable. When you're, you know, rehearsals, you just stick a cassette tape in, record the rehearsal, listen later. So um, I kept a couple of boxes for myself, um, not to resell or anything like that, just just for my own use. And I, I also questioned the the quality of the tapes too. You know, I, I wasn't sure how good they were, but uh, anyways, I I still have. Uh, this this is the cover for, and this this tape came from that particular time I'm mentioning. So you can see um, the, the it has the date of 1979 on it, but this is what the counterfeit looked like. Um, and and by the way, I can I can only uh, I I don't see any reason why the FBI agent would have made a mistake. Uh, I'm sure that some investigators for TDK had uh, were aware of the shipment and got the FBI involved, and they're the ones who absolutely were um, initiated this this uh, seizure, so to speak. Uh, that that was the cover. the The tape itself 
looks like this, the clear plastic, true mechanism on the side, uh, normal bias. And, and to tell you the truth, uh, I've used these over the years. I never had any problems with them. Um, you know, from my experience, they, you know, they're, they're low quality, but not, not terrible. You know, not the kind of quality where the tapes get uh, break or mangled, uh, so to speak. But uh, I, I was there. That's the tape. I still have them, Tony. Do you see, um, this is the thing. Yeah, people might think that you're a plant and you're just somebody that, um, you know, I've said, come and ask this. But like I said to you, you know, um, the truth is only relative to what can be gained for a lie. And I can't think of any gain that you'd have about lying about this. No one prompted you in the group. You just came up and told this story. Um, well, so, you know, there's yeah. no gain for you to be making this up in no. this day and age. No, and, and the funny thing is I just I was not aware that there were such groups on Facebook. Uh, my friend who owns a record store here in Brooklyn called Earwax uh, told me about it. He said, Are you, were you aware that there were these uh, blank cassette tape groups? I said, no, I, I, would, I had to check it out. And uh, as I said, I've always used them and utilized cassette tapes over the years. Um, by the way, here's my, my Walkman. Wow. That looks like yeah. an original survivor, that one. Yes, yes. Now, I don't know um, if you know... These were so big. When they came out in the late 70s, um, the first ones were metal. Let me just and move my, my picture Dave, so we can see it properly. There we go. Yeah. 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 That's and, huge. And, um, and it, had, it has the stereo mi microphones here. So um, back, back in the late 70s, my friend Danny had the first um, – the first edition, which was all steel, it was metal, very hard, mm -hmm. and it had these stereo mics on top. And that was fantastic, especially if you're making music. You just oh, yeah. put the thing in the middle in the middle of the room, press record, and you had stereo. I mean, that was fantastic. So this was probably second generation, second or third generation. You know, you could see it's plastic. But uh, it's held up all these years, and I still have that. So wanted to show you that. That's, um, that's awesome. That's fully loaded, that. Stereo recording and yes. FM stereo radio. That's, that's fully loaded for them days. That really it is. It was huge. It yeah. was huge to be able to, you know, carry something like that. I mean, of course, you, you know, you, you had things like this, too, you know. Oh, yeah. Your, your, your boom boxes. This one was from General Electric, you can see there. Yeah. But, uh, you know. Uh, but but that the the Walkman was wonderful. That was such a, a big deal for us to have that. So no, I, I have no uh, no ulterior motives to lie about any of this with the tapes. No, um, I I did see some some postings after I said that on Facebook. People going, oh no 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 no, he's full of shit. But uh, no, I was there, yeah. man. Now you see, I'm going to share with you what my thoughts are on this. Okay, yeah. so you've shown your C60 tape uh, card, which has got the orange. My light isn't great here, but here's this. I've got the 90s, and the 90s, for some reason, yeah. the C90 is in grey, not in green. Because if we look at an original one, the 90 is in green, but if we look at the tape itself, it's in green. Now, yeah. I've scoured the internet. I've not seen... A DC-90 true mechanism with green text. They all seem to be grey. Now, it's a bit perplexing, the cassette itself, because I've opened it up and I've done some checking. And yeah. from what I can see, the slip sheets inside look the same as a proper D-90. The hubs inside look the same as proper TDK hubs. This shell... With the um, with the TDK emblazoned on it at the top. Yes. This is the same shell that you can find TDK head cleaning cassettes in. Not mm -hmm. the D, head cleaning cassettes. Interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they come in this kind of frosted case. Right, right. So now is it the ninety is it the ninety that's in green that you have? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Because I have um, I have a case 
uh, that's also from the same era from 79 mm. that also has the green yeah. uh, 90. That, that's yeah. it. That's the genuine one. You see, the, 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 the yeah. genuine TDKs, the 90s are always in green, and they continue that up until yeah. sort of the mid-80s. So my thoughts are this, and this is why I wanted to clarify Cyprus with you. Right. Cyprus and Greece are not known for making audio cassettes. If these were to come from anywhere and they're counterfeit, you'd think they would come from Hong Kong or mm -hmm. China. But why would they go via Cyprus? Yes. Interesting. What country borders Cyprus? Turkey. Turkey. Yes. Did yes. Turkey have a massive cassette manufacturer in there? Ah. Yes, they did. They had racks. Wow. My thought, because the thing is, like you say, these are not terrible cassettes. In fact, to me, they, you know, I'm not going to give too much away, but they sort of bias and calibrate almost the same as the proper TDKD, but don't. But to me, they sound as good. They are usable. They are just, they're not, a, they're not a, you know, they're late like 70s ferric, but they're not a type zero. My thoughts on this go into two categories. One, it's either a calculated, well-financed, effort by Turkey, because let's be honest, Turkey wasn't in the best of diplomatic sort of, uh, you know, with America in the late 70s. So they went via Cyprus, but they were f they didn't want to try and sell their own cassette because who knew them? So what they did was they built a decent cassette. They somehow managed to get hold of a TDK shell and hubs. Maybe they were available on the market. Maybe they copied them. And they yes. put them as TDK on them and true mechanism rather than try and just make a complete copy TDK. They called them true mechanism to make them even seem better. Yes. But there are flaws about that because there are things which I don't get. The other thing mm. is that maybe TDK were trying out racks as maybe someone else to produce cassettes for them, but they didn't want them to just go straight away producing TDK cassettes in case they were rubbish. So they said, I'll tell you what, make something different. Here's some bits, see what you can do. Mm -hmm. And they maybe gave them the moulds for the old head clean and stuff, and they produced these, and TDK weren't happy with them, and they said, oh, bugger this, we're going to sell them anyway. I don't right. know. But I, my gut is these are not Chinese or Hong Kong because they are better quality. My gut is that they came from racks in Turkey because you said Cyprus, both yes. with Turkey, racks make cassettes. If they would come from China and Hong Kong, they wouldn't come via Cyprus. But this is just my musings. I can't prove any of this. But right. these are, right. just seem to make sense. But my thoughts overall is, because uh, I've done it earlier in the video, is if these were a genuine TDK product, why are they not mentioned in any TDK literature that I can find? When TDK were doing adverts with Stevie Wonder, blah, 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 why is it always a regular D and not this true mechanism if it's supposedly much better? Mm -hmm. And also why there's little, you know, things about the color of the printing and all that, that the orange and the red aren't quite right. The tape doesn't bias and calibrate exactly the same as a, a regular mm -hmm. one because I've owned a fresh 79 property to compare. So my thoughts are, yeah, they're either a well-funded counterfeit that probably come from racks who were starting out or TDK were maybe trying racks out to see what they could produce, weren't happy with the end result and disowned it. Those are my I, thoughts. I think I think that's a very, very good theory. Um, I mean, also, if you if you look on the uh, on the, the real tape covers there's all these addresses down here yeah and there's only one on, yeah exactly that, that that does not appear on the uh alleged counterfeits they, no. have, they have none of that down there no. just the one address in japan so yeah um i think that's a really good uh, theory that they they might have been produced in turkey so yeah, I, th I think you're on the case, Tony. Very good. Well, it's inconclusive, but I want to say, Gary, thank you very much for your time, for joining us on this, and your insight's been great, because it really, like I say, if it wasn't for that, I would never have had a second thought. If you hadn't been what, for what you said, I would have thought, are these dodgy? You know, I, w I wouldn't have thought that, but, you know, I just took them as, well, there, was, there was some TDK experiment, but... 
your yeah. story sort of said, yeah. So is there anything you want to share? I mean, you're still a musician now? Well, um, no, no, I, I'm involved in the theater. I'm a theater professional here in New York. But, um, you know, what I can relate to the cassette world is back in the mid 80s, I used to own a club in the East Village here in New York City, uh, a performance club. Um, the band, uh, they might be Giants. They might be Giants, uh, yeah, Birdhouse in Your Soul. Yeah, they yeah. exactly. They yeah. they were my house band. They started out in my club uh, to an audience of about ten people, and eventually built up the the audience. And uh, also, actor Steve Buscemi was oh, a fireman. Wow. He was a fireman when he was performing at my place, and uh, many many different um, performance artists, including uh, the well known. Um, um, Harry Kipper from the Kipper Kids, if you oh, are familiar with them. Okay. He, he also performed at my place. But I, I bring the club up, which is what's called Darinka. Darinka. And uh, I have a, a Facebook group, um, Darinka group. So uh, we are always posting lots of, uh, of photographs and flyers and what people are doing now. So check it out. But my point is uh, with the cassette tapes, these were so valuable back then because, you know, of course, you could make your mixes. You could put a, you know, 45 minute mix on one of these, stick it in the, the machine and not have to worry and, and, and really create the ambience and atmosphere that you really wanted at the time. So I, I just love these. You know, I, I loved cassettes back then. And um, I'm so glad that there are people interested in them right now. Yeah, you know? I mean, we're a micro niche, but, um, you know, it, the thing is, things that were magic when you were young always <laughs> remain magic. That never changes. <laughs> and nothing worthwhile is ever easy. You know, anyone That's can right. drag and drop a file. Who cares? These things, even knockoffs like this, they have character, but more than anything, they're iconic. These are never going yes. away. In 20 years, you will get yes. T-shirts with these on still. Yeah. That's beautiful. Yeah. Tony, so, thank you so much. Oh, no, thank you, Gary. Thank you very much, sir. It's been an absolute pleasure. Okay. Cheers. Thanks. Thanks. Bye. Bye. The truth. So what do we think now? Let's look at it from two sides. One, the true mechanism doesn't appear in any TDK literature or adverts. The C90 is not green. It doesn't list on the back all the different TDK offices where it does on the regular one. More than anything, this true mechanism, I don't get it. You really can't see much more of what's going on in the tape in this than you can in this because of the huge sticker and the black bubble sheet. The only place you can see anything is really down the bottom, but the rest of it is all crap about seeing it. And if we look at the picture of the insides again, I can't see anything special about that. I can't see any special things. It's not like a, the security mechanism in a BASF where you've got the little, uh, uh, what's it called, the little things that rub to the side of the tape and everything. You, 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 this just looks like a regular clear shell. And what they're saying about this being anti-snagging, anti-snarling, etc., is just BS. And TDK at this time were not a company known for BS. I mean, TDK at this time were a company who were making the MAR. You know what I mean? That was something to shout about, and they shouted about it. That's what they were making. A regular clear case from a head cleaner with all this hyperbole, which doesn't mean anything. It doesn't make sense. But there are other aspects of it. The hubs look like TDK. The bubble sheet looks like TDK. The shell with the TDK in Boston, it seems to be from a TDK head cleaner. That is not something that some Far Eastern knockoff merchant is going to really do. I mean, even, even this frosty case has got TDK on it, whereas the original doesn't. And then I looked at the top of the serial number, yeah? Look at this serial number. Can you see? It's just, um, let's see if we can get it in focus here. It's just a plain black serial number at the top. And that if we look at this used TDK, it's got a serial number on the top, but it's also got TDK emblazoned on the bottom. This doesn't have the TDK. But then we take this TDK, the brand new one, 
And that doesn't have the TDK emblazoned on the bottom neither. So, I don't know what to believe. I think part of this might be t genuine TDK and part of it not. Because the bottom line is, after that performance, this does not sound like a Type 0. It really doesn't. It has decent tape in it and in all fairness, I think it looks better than the actual 1979. This looks like a, a pre-recorded cassette with a paper label on it. This is not an attractive cassette and because I never used these at the time, they don't hold a lot of nostalgia to me. I think this looks meh. This looks a lot more interesting. So what do you think of my theories about racks? These apparently shipped in from Cyprus. Cyprus borders on Turkey. Turkey had racks. This is a decent tape. It's not the same tape as this. It biases differently, only slightly, but it's... Is it racks trying to, you know, make a good stab in the cassette market, generate some money, know that people aren't going to buy their cassettes on name alone, so they knock off some TDKs and call it a true mechanism? Who knows? Is it TDK trying out Rax as possible manufacturer to help them? Got the product out there, didn't like the product. Got them confiscated. Because there's a lot seem to not be confiscated. You know what I mean? There's still a lot of these out there. We'll never know. It's as simple as that. We'll never actually know. But the overarching thing is, if this was genuine TDK and they were proud of it, why didn't they mention it? And why would they do it? If you've got the best selling cassette in the world right now that you're pushing everywhere, why make this? This is essentially saying, hi, yeah, this true mech is better than this one. This one ain't so good. This is better. Why say this? And if it is true, why not shout about it when it turns out it's BS? There's no extra special mechanism in here. But right now in 2020, the overarching thing is this. It doesn't matter if this is a real TDK or not. It doesn't matter. All we know is these look good. They sound good. And because of the mystique behind whether it's a real one or not, because lots of them seemingly went into a furnace, these are rarer, these look cooler, and they're more collectible. So whether it's real or not in this day and age, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter what I think. Just know that as far as late 70s basic ferret goes, this isn't a Type 0. This is a decent performer. This looks good. This is an equivalent to this. And if they are proper brothers, or if they're stepbrothers, or if they're not related at all, right now, it doesn't really matter. So thanks for watching that video. Hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to tune into my radio show every Sunday where I go through new tunes and some old classics and I'm getting more and more ranty on that as times go on and there's also, if you go to mixcloud.com forward slash the retro nouveau, that's N-O-U-V-E-A-U, you'll be able to download past shows if you're getting bored and want something to listen to. But other than that, thanks for watching, please like and subscribe and I'll catch you on the next video. Happy taping. Bye bye.